Hello again. Uh, I'm going to talk about another one of our specialized services here at OrthoWell Physical Therapy. It's called uh, Trigger Point Dry Needling. Um, there's several different services that we offer. This is actually a newer one since we hired uh, Katie, our doctor of physical therapy, um, who is uh, certified in Trigger Point Dry Needling uh, to perform this in our clinic. So what I'd like to do today is to talk about the origins of, of trigger points, the physiology behind them, you know, pretty much a uh, you know, some theories of where trigger points come from, and then have Katie take it over and do a demonstration of a trigger, a, a, a dry needling technique on Matt, our trainer here. Um, so, what I'd like to talk about first is where do trigger, uh, trigger points come from? Trigger points are essentially um, taut bands of tissue in muscles. There's different theories for where trigger points come from. There's not a definitive explanation as to where trigger points come from. Um, there's a couple, uh, couple theories being Number one, that uh, it's an area of, 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 of scar tissue. Um, there's other theories that describe it being an area of waste products built up in the tissue. Um, sometimes it's an area just basically that doesn't have much oxygen or much blood that's going through it because of some sort of history of trauma, for example. There's a neurophysiological explanation as well, being that the, the nerves that innervate that, that particular section of muscle um, are creating a hyper um, activity of that muscle. Um, creating a, a, a constantly contracted state in that one little section of the muscle. Um, there's a couple different types of trigger points. One's called a, a latent trigger point. Another one's called an active trigger point. Active trigger points, when you push on them, can actively refer symptoms to other parts of the body. Okay? There is a, a woman uh, by the name, a doctor by the name of uh, Janet Travell, who's done a lot of work on it. She's pretty much the godmother of trigger points. Um, she's done a lot of work on, on trying to figure out the actual referral patterns of trigger points. For example, uh, to give you one, you know, one, maybe a couple, uh, you know, uh, explanations or a couple uh, examples of this is that uh, there's a trigger point that can occur in the infraspinatus muscle, which is one of the rotator cuff muscles in the back of the shoulder. Okay, when you push on that uh, that infraspinatus muscle, it can actually refer symptoms to the front of the shoulder, mimicking rotator cuff tendonitis or biceps tendonitis. So in some circumstances, if you don't adequately treat the soft tissue system and, and treat that trigger point, sometimes that shoulder pain is not going to go away. You might be thinking you're treating the problem, but you're missing either the primary um, uh, you know, reason why they have pain or even a secondary reason. So you, you basically want to treat both when it comes to these problems. Um, another example is a, is a trigger point in the, what we call the gluteus minimus muscle. It's a muscle that's deep in the upper gluteal region. Uh, when you push in that gluteus minimus, it can actually... Um, mimic symptoms of sciatica. So if you're not quite aware of these of these presentations and you treat the back, you might be missing the primary reason why they're getting referral into the leg. So we're, here at Orthowell, we're very you know in tune to the whole comprehensive evaluation to ensure that we're treating every aspect of the problem. So so treating both the infraspinatus, gluteus minimus, two examples of referral patterns, and there's many many options in here for uh, you know different referral patterns. Sometimes when you come in to see us. We kind of wonder, we'll pull up the, the compendium and, and try to figure out whether that, um, uh, that trigger point is actually a primary reason for the pain or a secondary reason. So when it comes to the actual uh, trigger point dry needling session, it's, it's, the, same, it's the same explanation. Uh, we don't have a definitive for why it is that trigger point dry needling works. Um, by, insert, by inserting the needle, there's that idea of bringing um, oxygen, bringing uh, circulation to the area. We actually can do a peppering uh, technique, which, which Katie can uh, demonstrate for you, that actually, same sort of thing, you're, you're trying to create almost like a little reactive um, uh, inflammatory process at that, at that trigger point to try to bring in oxygen, to try to bring in circulation. Um, if there's scar tissue, we're trying to break up that scar tissue with the actual mechanical stimulation of the, of the needle in the muscle. Regarding the neurophysiological aspect, sometimes by doing the needling, you're actually calming down that, that overexcited muscle, that hyperactive um, um, muscle and that hyperactive nerve. So uh, it's the combination of the, the increase in oxygen, the increase in circulation, and down-regulating that neurophysiological response. They've done some research uh, that compares the actual effect of dry needling versus um, trigger point injections, whether they inject with a steroid or or lidocaine or saline, the results are pretty much the same comparing injections to dry needling. Okay, So we have a Q&A section on our website that um, Katie and I put together that really goes into much detail about, um, about the techniques here. So if they have any further questions, please go to the website. And I think 
that's probably good enough of an introduction to this. I'm going to pass it over to Katie, Dr. Katie here, who's going to do a demonstration of a, maybe a trigger point dry needling to the um, upper traps of our, of our waiting uh, trainer here, Matt. So. so since this is Matt's first time getting the trigger point dry needling, I'm going to talk him through the process as I would any patient coming into the clinic. You know, it's your first time and people want to know what we're doing, why we're doing it. So as you can see, you know, I'm wearing gloves here to perform the technique. And the first step is actually to just clean the skin here with some rubbing alcohol. And also going through and palpating the muscle, finding, you know, where your knots are so we have a good sense of, of where we're going to be working. So the needles here come in sterile packaging. The needles are only used on one patient. So they're not reused. And we open the needles during your treatment session. So these are the same needles as acupuncture needles, but this is a different technique where acupuncture is a Chinese medicine technique working along energy lines and meridians. Trigger point dry needling is, as Chris explained, going directly into those trigger points that have formed in the muscle. So the first step here, go back into the muscle here and find that, that muscle knot. Place the guide tube with a needle in it right over that point, and then one, two, three, insert the needle in. Does that feel okay, Matt? Yep. So the needle itself shouldn't really feel when it's in. Sometimes when they're in those muscle knots, you can feel a cramping or a, a tightening sensation. Sometimes even uh, a little bit of a twitch kind of indicates we're right in that knot. And Chris also mentioned that technique kind of to make sure you're getting the knot, just moving the needle in and out. Kind of up and down and around, make sure you get all areas of it. All right there, Matt? Yeah. All right, I'm going to leave that one in. We'll do one more. Usually first session with someone, I do one to two um, needles in the muscle. Sometimes doing more in subsequent treatment sessions and working different muscles. So we'll also go right in here. One, two, three. Okay? Yep. And the other thing we can do with this trigger point needling technique, um, the needles stand for about 30 seconds to a minute. Just kind of make sure that you get the full benefit of the technique. And the other thing we can do is a, a stimulation technique. Basically get a little deeper into the muscle and help bring chemicals to the area to help the muscle relax. So then you need two needles here, one end of each of the units goes right onto there. And when this comes on, you may feel a, a ticking or a twitching sensation. It shouldn't be painful. Is that okay? Yeah. So this is on for about 30 seconds. And we typically do about two rounds of 30 seconds for, you know, over here, and then we'd go over to the other side of the muscle if we're doing a full treatment session here as well. And then once the needles are all set, we just Pull them right out. And then we just do a little gentle mobilization of the muscle here. It's been shown to actually help decrease the chances of soreness after treatment. Sometimes after the first, first session, the muscle can be a little sore or achy the next day, just as a result of a new technique being done. It usually takes about four to six sessions to kind of get the maximum benefit of the technique. And after, you know, as I said, that first session, the soreness typically goes away and people start feeling pretty good after the treatment is done. Not everyone experiences the soreness, but it's better to be prepared and potentially expect it. And that's that for the trigger point needling technique. So we don't typically want the patient to experience any pain doing this technique. It's not something that people Correct. really feel any pain. Yeah, it's very didn't, comfortable. didn't experience any symptoms during it. Good. I've had it done. Matt's had it done, obviously. Um, so it's nothing to be nervous about, nothing to, you know, be fearful of. Um, so, like I said, it's one of our many techniques that we offer here. Sometimes we do the, uh, the dry needling in and of it, uh, by itself. Um, more than likely, it's in combination with several other things that we do. Our grassing technique, our active release technique, maybe some laser on it as well. Uh, but it's pretty much up to the, the discretion of your therapist to kind of figure out what is the best plan of care, what are the best things to try for a particular type of problem. So, um, so that's pretty much it for now. Thanks a lot.